Did you know that the ancient Mesopotamians invented historical fiction? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the popular literary genre from ancient Mesopotamia known as Nauru literature, which was essentially the world's first historical fiction. We're also going to look into the meaning of a story about a king who is humbled by an invading army, only to learn to trust the gods. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. The literary genre of Mesopotamian Nauru literature first appeared in the region around the 2nd millennium BCE, and the stories not only became very popular, but seemed to replace the actual historical events in the minds of the people. Nauru literature featured a famous person, usually a king, as the main character, and the stories often concerned the relationship between humans and the gods. These stories are written as first-person accounts of significant events, and from them, the audience is meant to learn something important, whether that be the meaning of some historical event, a religious moral, cultural value, or any other lesson which the audience may have benefited from. The writers of Nauru literature are mostly anonymous, so they must have staked their immortality on the popularity of the tales without the need to attach their names to the work. Although, it's also possible that they may have signed them and the original tablets have just been lost. The term Nauru was originally used for boundary stones, memorial stones and monuments. And at the beginning of the second millennium, tablets that were used for building inscriptions and tablets that accompany gifts were also called Nauru. Even earlier, at the end of the third millennium, Nauru was associated with religious transactions but they became bearers of memory, if only symbolically, in the 2nd millennium BCE, which means they came to preserve an event, even if the story differed from the actual historical record. Before the development of Nauru literature, it was a pretty common practice for Mesopotamian kings to inscribe buildings and stele. The earliest form of writing in Mesopotamia was pictograms, with symbols that represented objects, but later, writing developed into phonograms, with cuneiform being the widespread script of the Mesopotamian region. And so, literature became possible. Finally, the kings could fully record for posterity their glory and victories, and their inscriptions focused both on their great deeds, as well as the gods, and would often address a deity or a future audience. Nauru literature developed from these inscriptions, in that they took the same form, but were written as stories that concerned themselves with the deeds of the king and his relationship with the gods. The main difference between the Nauru literature and the Nauru inscriptions is that where the inscriptions tell of a king's triumphs and the events of their reign, the literature often tells us of a king's struggles and failures, the details of which may or may not have actually occurred though. As in modern day historical fiction, Nauru literature featured recognisable figures and events from the past, but placed them in imaginative settings, sometimes involving supernatural beings, and almost always focusing on the will of the gods. Unlike today's historical fiction, the main character, usually a historical king, makes decisions and takes action the real person would never have done in order to drive home a certain lesson or moral. One of the best examples of Nauru literature is the tale The Legend of Kutha from the 2nd millennium BCE that features the Akkadian king Naram Sin. The tale tells of how a superhuman army invades Akkadian lands. Although Naram Sin is explicitly told by the gods not to do anything about these invaders, he defies them and goes with his own judgement in the matter. Naram Sin engages in battle against these superhumans, who have been associated with the Gutians, actual human invaders, 
and he suffers massive losses. He tries military force two more times before he realizes he's doing something wrong. Naram Sin is truly humbled by this point, and both asks forgiveness and seeks guidance from the gods. The gods say that they had plans to destroy the invaders and didn't need or want the help of Naram Sin. From this, the king understands that he should trust the will of the gods, regardless of his own personal judgment or what he thinks is right. He learns from his error, and the tale ends with Naram Sin addressing the future rulers of the Akkadian Empire, telling them to learn from his mistake and to trust the gods. The largely anonymous writers of the Nauru literature seem to have all had the same focus, which was to preserve the past while creating entertaining and memorable tales that relate the vital cultural values of their society. In the legend of Kutha, for example, the memory of the Gutian invasion of circa 2083 BCE is preserved, but placed earlier during the reign of the historical Naram Sin, 2261 to 2224 BCE. The invasion, which was remembered as some kind of curse of the gods for unknown reasons, is here given meaning and Naram Sin is chosen as the main character for his famous name and to show that even so great a king could make mistakes and learn from them. The inscriptions of a king victorious over his enemies and who conquered many cities was a good marker of the successes of that king, but didn't do much for the people who lived under him. Nauru literature, on the other hand, provided the people with entertaining stories they could learn from, remember, and make use of in their daily lives. Do you know of any examples of Nauru literature in later civilizations? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my sweater, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.